Okay, hello guys, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Uh, in this part 3, we're going to be going ahead and taking a look at um, just how we can get the AI to actually damage your player. Um, it's going to consist of two things. First of all, setting up health on the player, and then second of all, uh, you know, taking that health down when we're near to the enemy. Um, what I've got in this project is what I've actually built throughout episodes 1 and 2. So if you've not watched episodes 1 and 2 yet, it's highly recommended that you head on back to episodes 1 and 2 um, and you follow those through thoroughly and get everything done on there so that you're actually up to speed with this project. Uh, if you've done that, come back over to this video, pick up where you left off and as for everyone else that's up to date, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is the most obvious thing, I'm going to head up and set up the health on the character. Um, so we're going to go ahead and bring this onto the screen over here. So we've got our third person character here. This is totally just the default third person character thing, nothing added. And the first thing we want to do is add a new variable. And since health uh, in this game, we're only going to have whole numbers for health. So we're going to use an integer and we'll just call this variable HP. Now we need to make this a visible variable here because we're going to be calling it from other blueprints. So it's important that we take this little closed eyelid over here and open the eye so that we can see this from elsewhere in the project. Now one thing I'm going to do is add a new custom event and this is going to be named check HP if I could type HP. Now uh, the reason for this custom event is basically what we're going to do is we're going to um, what we're going to do? We're going to uh, check the HP of the character every time we've reduced it. So if we've, what will happen is we'll reduce the HP, then we'll call this function which will check it. And if the new HP is below zero or below one even, so at zero or below because it's a whole number, it's going to kill the player. So check HP is simply going to go with a branch is the HP, the current HP, is it less than one? And if it is less than one, we want to destroy the actor. Now, you would have, if you were doing this properly, you'd have play death animation, play death sound, uh, open end game menu or whatever, but we're just simply going to destroy it. You know, all of that stuff can be figured out. That can be totally anything you want over here, but this principle here remains the same. We're calling a custom event that checks whether the HP that we currently have is less than the value of one. And if it is, we're going to destroy the actor. Simple enough. Easy jobs done. So that's all we're going to do inside the third person character. We've got our variable set up. We've got the check HP custom event set up and everything else we're going to do with inside the artificial intelligence blueprint. Now, what we want to do is we want to head on up here and we want to actually make another custom event here. That's not a custom event. Oh, come on. Okay, so this custom event is going to be called uh, Remove Player Health. Or Remove Player HP. Um, and this is going to be called on the end of this node. So Remove Player HP. So this is called every so often. So these uh, kind of ticks, whenever it sees it, whenever it sees the player, it goes like tick, 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 tick. Not as fast as a tick, which means we'll get a better performance. But at the same time, it's still ticking fast enough for it to um, for it to be useful for us. So we're going to plug in the remove player HP custom event into this top part of the AI move to here. And this AI move to is the one that's hooked up to on C pawn sensing. So this is when we see the player. Um, if you you won't have this in your video, but I've also changed this variable from 0.5 to 1, but I'll probably even bump it up a little bit more to 1.5 just to, it basically gives us a bit more time for the zombie to catch the player's sight again. Uh, before he starts going back to patrolling so they don't give up so easily with the more we increase this variable But at the same time they kind of become a bit dumber. I'll explain that later um, So we've picked up That we've increased that from 0.5 to 1.5. We've also called our remove player HP custom event here So what does this remove player of uh, remove player HP custom event actually do? Well, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to cast to third person character. So it's saying, okay, we're going to now go and call it, we're going to do some things with the third person character variables and functions. Now the object needs to be hooked up. Whoa. Okay. The object needs to be hooked up to the pawn here because obviously the pawn that we want to see has to be the third person character for this to work. 
So we're going to come off here. We don't need, we want to ignore cast failed. So off the cast, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to get its current HP. So we're going to get HP. And you can see that that works there. If you don't see HP there, make sure that your third person character is compiled. You need to compile it to make that uh, this variable visible in other blueprints. So we're going to head over to here. We're going to get the HP, but we're also going to set the HP. And we want to set the HP to the current HP minus something like 10. So every time he hits you, he's going to take 10 health off you. Okay, simple enough. But there is one thing I want to do in here. I want to um, set, I want to get the uh, character movement. And I want to set max warp speed. Uh, I also want to get max warp speed. And I want to divide this by two. Oh, not two million or whatever, just two. Um, and then that's going to be that. So what I'm doing here is when he catches up to you, I'm halving his, his movement speed. I'm then setting the HP down. Then we're going to have a small, a small delay of 0.2 seconds. And then we're going to set the walk speed again to the new max walk speed. Except this time we're going to now multiply this value by two. So float multiplied by float, we're going to multiply it by 2, and that will give us our new max mock speed. Make sure we set the target up to the character movement um, thing, whatever, I forget its name. Let's just quickly walk through what we've got here. So when remove player HP is called, we're going to cast a third person character. We're going to, first of all, set the, move, the walk speed of the AI to half of what it is. So we get its current max walk speed, we half it, we set its new max walk speed to that value. Um, then we go ahead and, you know what, I don't even need this node. I could have done that, hooked it to that. We'll leave that node there, whatever. Then we're going to set the HP. So we're casting to the player and saying, okay, what's your current HP? Your current HP is 100. Well, you've got 100. We're going to take 10 off it. We're going to set that so you now have 90. So when this is called the second time, it's going to say, okay, your current HP is 90. Because remember, we set that last time. Your current HP is 90. We're now going to take 10 off it again. You're on 80 HP. We're going to set that. Enjoy your 80 health. Okay, so then that's going to come up on here. We're going to set the walk speed back up, and he can carry on running. Um, now, there's one other one other thing I wanted to do. Um, although, actually, I may not need to. I'll tell you what, let's give it a test. Let's see how it plays. That's always one great way of checking how your code works. Is just, do you know what, just pause what you've got, jump into the game and see how it plays. So, if you remember from the last video, the AI picks two random points. Oh, he spotted me, so we may as well just jump down and oh, we can watch him. He's got two random points he patrols between. Unfortunately for us, those two are pretty close. So let's go ahead and uh, get his attention. And he's running after us. Um, he's actually knocking our health down as this goes along. Ah, there's one thing that didn't quite go to plan. I missed a pretty crucial part there. So what I'm doing is immediately, as soon as he sees you, He's actually knocking down your health the moment he sees you. We didn't get the distance between the two characters. So, yeah, all well, this is well and good and correct, but I've missed a pretty important step here. What we need to do is get a node called get distance to. There we go. And our current actor is going to be us, and the other actor is going to be the third person character. So, with that, we then want to come off to a branch. And we want to set this to less than something like 150. Now, because everybody's game, if it's less than one, yes, because everybody's game kind of scales differently, you know, you've got different bounds and whatever, everybody's game is going to be set up differently. This value will change. This is not a fixed value. And to find out what you should probably set it to, one way of doing it would be to set up an event tick real quick and print. And you're going to print the value of this. So what's going to happen is as soon as he sees you, we're going to get a long list of numbers down the side telling us exactly how far in a real engine unit that AI is from our character. So let's go and take a look at that. So it's zero because he hasn't actually seen us. Now let him get his eye on us. And you'll see that we're at 700, 600, 500, 400, 300. And this, this distance is about right for him to hit me, I'd say. So when it's below 130, 
I'll give it 150. So when it's below 130, I want it to hit me. If you want it closer, then you know you can you can just look at this value. That that value there when he was stood still was 84. You don't want it that close. You know you need a bit of room for him to to, to catch up to you. So go ahead and set it to something like 150, 200 for now. And if it doesn't feel right, if it feels like it can hit you from too far away, go ahead and remove that. So let's have a bit of testing done there for the for the value that we want in here. So we're gonna go ahead and hook that into the condition connect the execution nodes up, compile it, and that's my phone ringing. Let me just hang up on that for you. Um, I'll answer it and then hang up immediately. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, that could have been important. Oh well, this is more important. Um, right, so one thing we are going to do, so we've got that custom event in here. Now what we want to do is back in the AI, now that we've reduced the health, we're actually going to call that check health thing. So off the third person character again, we're going to call the function check HP. So if just in case you missed what I did there, off the third person character that we've cast to, I'm going to call its function check HP, which remember in here basically just says, okay, is your health less than one? And if it is, we're going to destroy the actor, end the game, whatever. So back into the AI, we've done that. Now, one thing we can do again for debugging, just to prove that this works, is inside the third person character over here, we're going to go ahead and add an event tick and we're going to print a string and the string is going to be health. So we're going to constantly print the value of our health. So let's go ahead and get chased by this thing. Come on. There we go. So you see he got close to me there. His movement speed kind of got slowed down a bit. He's caught me again, you know, slows down a bit. That slow, that, that point where he slows down is where you would add in your... Um, your animation for him like striking you with a melee or something. Um, so I'm trying to run away from him. My health's on 50. You know, he's going back patrol to patrolling. He's lost sight of me. Let's let him catch me again. And we'll let him kill me now. 30, 20, 10, 0. I don't have a player. Can't control anything. Yep, can't do anything. And he's gone back to patrolling between his two points. So that's how you would set up the AI to damage the player. And that's how you'd set up the health on the player to receive the damage. Um... So it's relatively simple now. Obviously, I, I will probably do another tutorial about how they shoot you or something. So we're going to get the we're going to get the range, but we're also going to need to add a bullet spread to that because the way I would do it, these things would be incredibly accurate and would shoot you every single time. So we need to kind of add some. I'll cover that in another tutorial. But basically, lots of random numbers and random things are fantastic, great fun, and then to increase the accuracy, you just kind of decrease the range, but. That's my mind just wandering, thinking about future projects and future tutorials right now. But to wrap this up, just go back and take a look over what we've got. We can remove this debugging system now. You can see that we've got the check HP event that basically checks to make sure it's less than zero before destroying the actor. We've got our function here that checks the distance to the character and then goes ahead and halves the movement speed of the AI, hits us, removes our health, waits a little moment, puts the movement speed back up and then calls check HP. In fact, I would probably put check HP in here just to get it done sooner rather than later. It doesn't matter where you put it as demonstrated, but I would probably not put that at the end and put that in after the HP bit there. So that's it for this tutorial, guys. I hope this has helped you. I hope it's uh, demonstrated how we can add health to a player. And one, one thing you will notice is unlike my other videos in these two, in this, in this, these two tutorials, I haven't actually used event tick once. Now I'm trying to stay away from using event tick as much as possible and go for a more, I don't want to say event driven because it's still object oriented programming, but a kind of event driven approach. So things only happen when other things tell them to happen as opposed to the cut the system constantly checking for them. So imagine, imagine a lift, right? Um, the lift doesn't say, has someone pressed the button yet? Has someone pressed the button yet? Has someone pressed the button yet? And it's just waiting and it's just checking. Have you pressed the button? It just says, okay, I'm a lift. I'm going to do nothing. As soon as you press the button, it says, oh, look, an input. Let's move up or down. So that's the way I want this to work. I, I want to start doing my project so that we're not constantly checking for something because that is really heavy on performance. Instead of constantly checking, we're going to do things when things come into vision, when things are, you know, and we're going to leave these the, the checking to be done with things like event porn on C, etc. So when we enter those bounds. Um, so that, yeah, like I said, that's it for this tutorial, guys. I hope it's been helpful. As always, don't forget to like the video, comment on it if it's helped you, comment with any help, any, uh, any help you do need. I try my best to reply to as many comments as possible on YouTube and do try my best to provide individual help. Um, 
So yeah, I guess I'm going to wrap that up there, as always. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.